We begin with Tony Mopshin as he introduces us to the anatomy of the brain. What we have here is the beginning of a very brief tour of the structure of the human brain. We're looking at a computer-generated image of the left hemisphere of a human brain. Now, this brain is covered, as the human brain is, uh, most prominently by a structure called the cerebral cortex, which is this gray mantle of tissue uh, that's really almost all that's visible when you look at the human brain from the side. And the cerebral cortex is the main computing machinery of the brain, and it's also the part of the brain that's most highly evolved in humans compared to our ancestors uh, in the animal kingdom. Now, we customarily divide the cerebral cortex uh, into four lobes, and the four colors in the image here show you uh, the four lobes and their, their positions. And the four lobes have many different functions, but we characteristically think of them as having a number of sort of primary functions. The occipital lobe here, shown in red at the back of the brain, is the main seat of visual function. Um, that's an, a lobe which is particularly dear to my heart because it's the system of the brain that I work on. The temporal lobe, here shown in green, uh, is involved in a number of complex functions. It's involved in higher processing of visual information. It's involved in the laying down of memories. And it's involved in the processing of information about sounds and in the conversion of information about sounds into linguistic representations and into the programs that allow us to speak and understand language. The parietal lobe, here shown in blue, is sort of the central spatial orientation organ of the brain. The parietal lobe combines information from multiple senses, including vision, hearing, and touch, and it formats motor commands, output commands, uh, for the muscles, which allow the body to be oriented in space with respect to the stimuli in the environment. So when you navigate in the world, when you look around the world, when you decide what parts of the world to pay attention to, it's the parietal cortex which is doing the bulk of the work. Finally, in purple, here is the frontal lobe at the front of the brain. The frontal lobe is the most highly evolved part of the cortex in humans. Um, it is the part of the brain that is probably most directly responsible for making us human. Uh, it is the part of the brain that is responsible for decisions, for actions, for many functions that are often now called executive control functions, deciding what to do, where to go, what to eat, what to say, probably more importantly, what not to do and what not to say and where not to go. And so it's the ultimate sort of seat of central control in the brain. So we're now looking again at the view of the left hemisphere of the human cerebral cortex. Now, the cerebral cortex looks like a cauliflower in this kind of view, and that's the way we tend to think about it. But it is, in fact, um, a very elaborately organized sheet of cells, which has been folded up so that it actually fits inside the cranium. And a way to visualize that is the following. Imagine that the brain's computing machinery is actually flat, like this piece of paper. Uh, but the skull is not well suited to accommodating a flat piece of paper. So what do we do to accommodate it in the skull? Well, we basically crumple it and fold it, and we create a series of folds. And in the next video clip, which was prepared by my colleague David Van Essen at Washington University, what we're going to see is that process in reverse. We're now looking at the right hemisphere, and this is actually a computer-generated image generated from magnetic resonance imaging data. And it's been colored so that the light-colored parts of the image represent parts of the brain near the surface of the skull, and the dark-colored parts of the image represent parts of the brain that are buried deep within these folds, which we call sulci. Now, in the first section of the film, I'll just spin this around so that you can see the three-dimensional structure of what we're looking at, which is, of course, similar to what we've seen before. And in the next segment of the film, what we're going to do is treat this brain as though it were made like a child's balloon out of rubber, and we could inflate it just by pumping air into it. So the brain gradually inflates. The things that were colored dark to indicate their depth in the brain are still dark, so you can keep track of what was deep in a sulcus and what wasn't. But now you have a much simplified form of the brain, what we call a semi-inflated form. Finally, the last stage of this process is to flatten this semi-inflated form out into a completely flat sheet. And now what you can see is that this cauliflower structure that we're used to seeing uh, in the brain as this uh, elaborately folded cerebral cortex is in fact a single flat sheet of cells. Now this particular sheet shows by its coloring how deep in the brain the structures were. But when we talk in the course of the series, as we will, about localization of function in the brain and talking about different parts of the brain performing different operations, what we'll be talking about is different regions which are most conveniently and most accurately visualized as living on this sheet 
the unfolded sheet of the cerebral cortex.